What year is that Gus Macker shirt from, Graham? And what city? Hey, Matt, I got one on it. I'll tell you, it's from Ludington. Hey, yours is, this one. This one's like early '90s. It's a throw. It's a new one. Though. It's, it's a throwback. Oh, throwback. Yeah, so they make it it because my actual Gus Macker shirts have so many pit stains and tears in them that my wife won't let me wear them. I have not thrown them away though. Well, you gotta have something to play basketball in still, right? Yeah. I'll look for my two Lansing ones, Graham, and maybe I'll gift them to you. They they don't have holes in them, and they don't have tears. And you're not on mute, so you don't have to give me thumbs up. You can actually just answer. By the way, Chris's new role is um, Zoom police, and the questions you're supposed Zoom to ask police. now. There you go, Matt. Nope. You, know, you know what I'm talking about, you jackass. <laughs> you know how to start your video? There That's it is. You. <laughs> That's for you, buddy. Oh. I like how Graham is acting like he's mute, but he's not. <laughs> Spit out my coffee. All right, looks like we're joined here by Coach Trussell. Coach, thanks for joining us for a few minutes today in your busy schedule as we get ready for practice. Uh, we'll take uh, some questions in the chat like, uh, like usual, and we'll get things going. Let's go. We'll take uh, first off, Stephen Brooks from 24-7 Sports. Hey, Mike. Thanks for doing this. Um, uh, sorry, I'm trying to get your videos set in front and center. Okay. Uh, through two scrimmages, I guess, uh, what are you liking about your position? And what can you say, I guess, about the, the development of the defense to this point, the state of that side of the ball? I'm, I'm excited about the development of the defense. You know, our guys have foundation, obviously, to build on and a belief in great defense here, but they're, they're learning some new techniques, learning some new ways to skin a cat and, and, um, and believe it. So um, I'm excited about that in terms of uh, the safety group as a whole, you know, I think Xavier's leadership's continuing to step up and his plays continuing to step up. Michael Dow, Trey person have uh, really had good, really had good falls thus far. So I'm excited about them getting more playing time and both of them been on the field a bunch, but then there's some others, you know, I mean, um, Darius snow, uh, Manuel flowers, there's some other guys you'll see contribute. And if I could ask you, like just for yourself, I mean, you haven't been in the same system for such a long time and being able to learn some new things, teach, coach some new things. Does that sort of, is that sort of an exciting thing to, you know, stretch a different part of the football brain for lack of a better term for you and sort of, uh, like I said, learn all these new things alongside these guys. Yeah. You know, regardless of, um, scheme and such, um, learning from Coach Tucker, learning from Coach Hazleton, you know, uh, learning from Coach Ells and, and seeing various ways that different people do things, even if it's quarters or, or, or man free or whatever it might be, everybody has a little bit different taste or tweak or coaching point, and, and it's been good to hear that stuff. I've been growing as a coach for sure. Thank you. Next question is from Matt Wenzel with MLive. Hey, Mike, uh, you, when you kind of look at the secondary as a whole, you, you, you lose um, Josiah and, um, like, and David Dow from last year, a couple of three-year starters. Do you see this group trying to I don't know, create a, a new identity of, of its own with, with the pieces you have coming back? You know, I wouldn't say create a new identity because I think they believe in the identity that we've had, um, the no-fly the Spartan dogs. And I think the tradition is, is what we're trying to live up to. And, and I think there is belief in the room that they can be the next chapter without a doubt, but I wouldn't say creating a new identity is, is the goal. 
that, that being said, I mean, you, you have guys that are stepping into new roles. How much do you see those guys being eager? Like I like Shaq, who's, you know, who's kind of in position to be that top cornerback with most experience and then kind of the uncertainty behind him. And then Xavier being a guy who talked about stepping up his leadership and you just mentioned that and then looking for that other starter as far as just the hunger from those from some of the other guys to take on new uh, responsibilities. The, the hunger's there for sure. You know, that's one of the great things about um, having some new coaches is if you were quote unquote next in line, as you said, hey, there's nothing guaranteed the 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 new coaches rolling in, they don't necessarily see you as next in line. They don't, they don't see a line. They see a group of guys and they have to figure out who's best. So I think it's been great motivation and, and um, really added a sense of urgency to everybody on the defense. Thank you. Next question is from Graham Kyle to the Lansing State Journal. Hey, Mike, uh, I wonder if somebody who's been under one head coach, coach under one head coach since 2004, what you've noticed about Mel Tucker uh, since you've been coaching on his staff uh, over the last few months, like what, what stands out to you about him as you guys go into this, this, this first year together? Well, first of all, anything I point out is not direct comparison to coach D'Antonio, I guess it's, it's just the fact that there's no doubt that coach Tucker has great organizational skills. Um, the, the number of personnel and, in our department's grown a little bit, but the organization and, and the, um, I guess the, the tree of roles is real laid out and the communication's fantastic. He has great defensive mind, there's no doubt about it. So he's helping us in that area, but, but also letting Coach Hazelton do his deal and really empowers people within their role to be able to run and, and take their group and take pride in it. Um, that, that sort of impressed me. Great connection with the players, um, fantastic sense of humor. Um, so it, it, it's been real good. I've enjoyed it, no doubt. Next question is from Chris Salar, the Detroit Free Press. Hey, Mike, you, you kind of alluded to it somewhat when you talk about the, the new ways to skin a cat. Um, with short order to, to kind of prep everything and, and install, um, what, what have been the benefits of having four guys who were running their own defense within the last couple of years with you and Mel and, and Harlan and, and Scott? I mean, have you guys, he, he mentioned this last week that you guys have been doing a lot of collaborating. How much are you picking each other's brains at the moment? A lot. I think that's one of the exciting things for us as coaches is there's a lot of knowledge and every one of us from, from Coach Tucker on can learn a lot. But we also know you have to build on your player's knowledge base, your pay, player's strength, your player's experience. And one of the worst things you can do as a coach is try to fit a round peg into a square hole. So certainly we're having to utilize the experience and, and expertise that our guys have and, and not make everything new and different. Got to play fast. And, and kind of as a follow to that, with the, the short prep time, does that mean simplifying things? Is that – based on what you maybe in February and March we're talking about versus the actuality of the situation right now? I think it means simpl simplifying things for every team across America. And, and um, um, yeah, there's an extent of that to us as well, because like I just mentioned, like I've always believed, the most important thing is that you can play fast. You know, we want the smartest players in America pre-snap, the fastest players in America post-snap, and they got to know exactly what's expected of them to be able to play that way. Next question is from Seth Wells with WILX. Hey, Mike, you mentioned a little bit about what Tucker has brought to the program. I'm more curious about from the player's side of things. How do you think they, because, you know, you've been here, how do you think they have used or handled this transition from D'Antonio to Tucker? I think they've done a really good job. You know, kids are, are resilient. In addition to that, Coach Tucker is very, very, very good and connects with them very well. Um, it was hard at first because they love Mark D'Antonio. There's no doubt about it. They love Mark D'Antonio. But um, it, it's been really smooth. I mean, they're, they're all in right now. I don't sense anybody looking backwards at all. I feel like everybody's 100% looking forward and, and believing in what we're doing. Thanks, Mike. Next question is from Lindsey Huddleston. 
Hi, Mike. Uh, by definition, the safety is the last line of defense on the defense. Whether that's added pressure or not, what kind of mindset do you have to have your guys to have to be able to take that on, knowing that in many cases they're, they're really the backbone of everything that's uh, important on the defensive side of the ball? Yeah, I think every defense in America talks about the uh, importance of not giving up explosive plays or or limiting explosive plays. And, and Coach Tucker, as a defensive backfield guru by trade, has talked about any explosive that's allowed, that's on the defensive backfield. Even if, if it's a run play and it gives up more than 12 yards, even if everyone in the front seven screwed up, that's why we have safeties, to make sure those runs don't turn into explosives. Um, so we have, to, as a safety, you have to buy into that. You have to embrace that. Um, in addition, though, we need to make sure as coaches that they know exactly what to do. Because as soon as you have some questions in there, as soon as there's some hesitation, as soon as your feet stop in the deep part of the field, hey, you're going to give up explosives no matter how badly uh, you're trying to prevent that. So it's a combination of embracing that, having a short memory, um, but also being right on top of your game where, where you don't have question marks because they slow you down. And real, as a quick follow-up, the short memory part, do you notice a lot of the younger players have shorter memories or do you find them kind of lamenting over bad plays and you can still see they're stuck in that last play and you got to get them out of it? You know, it's 100% individual-based. You know, we got some young guys that walk in the door with short memories. And um, we have some older guys who the, the, it's a process their whole career trying to get them to let go of the last play. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we know that's a cr critical component of playing in the defensive backfield. But uh, um, you work on it with everybody. But some guys walk in the door with that and other guys you're working all the time. Get it. All right. Thank you so much. You can't have such a short memory that uh, you don't learn from your mistakes, though. That's that's part of it, too. It's a fine line. Yes, it is. Right. Thank you, Coach. We have time for a couple more. We'll go to Matt Charbonneau, the Detroit News. Thanks, Mike. Now that you guys are back out on the field, how, how good does it feel to kind of look over there and see Harlan, the guy you've worked so much with, kind of being back with him? And then I know you guys are both coaching specific positions, but how much – is it kind of a team effort back there is, is, you know, working with the secondary as a whole? And does your guys' familiarity kind of help with this short time period you have to get ready to kind of get these guys ready? It, it's definitely a team effort. I mean, we're probably um, splitting time between having meetings individually and having meetings as a whole group. I mean, it's, it's like the offensive line. The communication has to be seamless. Um, I'm certainly leaning on Coach Barnett for – years and years and years and years and years of coaching secondary. Um, he helps me a bunch there as well as Coach Tucker. But it's definitely a group effort and the fact that we've been together for years and um, love each other like brothers, that, that makes it that much easier. And we both have great knowledge of our guys and what, um, what their strengths are and what their backgrounds are uh, so we don't throw too much at them or use what they already have. So that's nice that we uh, have that experience with these guys. Next question, we'll go to Jim Caproni with Spartan Magazine. Hey, Mike, great to see you. I mean, I love I, – I, I could ask you a, a ton of questions. You know that, but we don't have a whole lot of time. Um, uh, you didn't mention Tate Halleck. Is he still with your with your group? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Tate, Tate's, Tate's coming along too, and I tell you what, I feel bad mentioning any names because I always uh, leave a guy off, you know. But, um, I mean, shoot, he's just a redshirt freshman, and he is probably 20 pounds heavier than he was a year before a year ago and learning to play more and more and more physical. So he'll, he'll have a role out there. There's, there's no doubt about that. There's no doubt about that, but we also have some guys that have a bunch of experience too. And that's a good problem to have. All right. Uh, Scotty Hazleton last year at Kansas state, they did a lot of things using a third safety up near the box linebacker level type of thing. If you do the same type of thing this year, and I know you can't give away trade secrets, of course, but, uh, who among safeties is looking like they might be able to play that role if Michigan State did something similar uh, this year? Playing a third safety like Iowa State or something? Well, you know, like number 31 for Kansas State last year played basically in a 4-2-5. Uh, it was a fifth defensive back like a lot up at the linebacker level. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Um, I mean, there's some flexibility. I think uh, 
if we'd have stayed in our previous system, Michael Dowell could have ended up being a star linebacker for us, um, for example. But Antoine Simmons done a hell of a job over the course of his career playing that space linebacker too. So I hate to speak, I guess the bottom line, you sit there and you say, okay, with Xavier, Michael, Trey, Emmanuel, Tate, Darius Snow, we got some numbers. And the challenge for us as coaches is get the best 11 or the best combination of 11 on the football field at a time. And, and uh, um, you know, there's packages and situations where we can try to do different things. All right. One more thing. Trey Person, can you expand a little bit more on what he in what ways he's improved? You know, he, he's really quick twitch back there and he and he always has been. Um, he's been caught in a little bit of a situation where there's been some depth in front of him. So um, he hasn't been started for extended periods of time, but you can see his confidence flying high right now. And he's playing with the speed that he has. His, his initial quickness is phenomenal. So um, his vision and break, for example, when that ball is thrown, those first five steps are as good as it gets. So I'm excited to watch him transfer that to the football field. I think just him having more opportunities, uh, you'll see him making plays. One more thing about Trey Person. Uh, it's my understanding with the new NCAA rules, these players get an extra year of eligibility. He's a senior that was kind of sped through the process a little bit. If I'm not mistaken, he'll, ha he'll have the option to come back and play again in 2021. How much can that rule help someone like him who played early, but maybe not as much, if I've got the rule right? Yeah, I think the rule states that uh, it's up to Coach Tucker's discretion okay. who, who you can – keep around for an extra year but okay. yeah he could and and I think that puts a guy that's a senior in a great position hey if you have a fantastic year and you can move on and keep playing great if you feel like you're still learning and and growing at a great rate then you can stay around for another year if your head coach opts to keep you around so um it gives it gives a guy like Trey some options so my hope is always that he has a fantastic year and he's going to be drafted and he's out of here because that means he played well and that means we played well. Thank you. Sounds good, Coach. Well, that's all the time we have. I know he's got to get run into a meeting. So I appreciate your time uh, for a few minutes today and we'll, we'll see you soon. All right, Ben, appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach.